the Lord. Let him shout a thunderous hallelujah. Let's jam our hands together for the Lord. Church is not only for learning the word of God, it's also for fellowship. So go to somebody that is not a member of your parish, male to male, female to female, because I don't want anybody's husband to query me. And at least take his or her name and call him during the week or her and encourage him. Okay, so while we are doing that, choir, let's take this song. From glory to glory, it's changing me, changing me. My God is changing me. It's likeness and image made perfect in me, the light that was shown to the world. Amen. Somebody you don't know, take his or her number, call him or her during the week, encourage him or her, and pray with her. Can you please, can you please project that song from glory to glory? Is changing me. It should be in my PowerPoint. From glory to glory is changing me. Changing me. My God is my God is changing me. His likeness and image made perfect in me. The light that was shown to the world. I'm not taking anybody's number. now you should have taken one number let's come back to our seats as we take that song standing i'm sure you have taken somebody's number now so let's come back to our seats pastor ugunto imbo go back to your seat as we now rise and take that song together three times choir please Lord is changing me, His likeness and image made perfect in me, the light that was shown to the world, God is changing, changing me from earthly things to the heavenly, His likeness and image made perfect in me. The light that was shown to the world. Father, as we listen to your word today, change us into your image. Again, we pray, let us all encounter you. Father, heal the sick. Put us on fresh fire. 
And Father, let us go back home to even desire you the more. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You may please be seated. I want to appreciate all those who have spoken before us. Amen. Uh, Pastor Dagbo, let's appreciate him. I've known Pastor Dapo now for over 25 years. And uh, we used to work together in the same office. In fact, we went to buy my first new car together. And he drove the car to the office. And when I sent him to Greensboro, he came back after two. He said, Daddy, that place is dry. I said, where do you want to go to? He said, I want to go to Baltimore. I said, okay, go to Baltimore. And God has helped him there since several days. Let's appreciate him. <laughs> and of course, let me appreciate my assistant regional pastor. <laughs> and my mommy and my wife. Amen. God bless you. We'll be married just for 39 years. <laughs> and she's been a good girl all along. <laughs> the good girl of the house. I want to appreciate some churches that registered, even though they came from a far place, the book hotels. Uh, the first one is House of Praise, Norfolk. Where is their pastor? <laughs> House of Praise, Norfolk. Okay, can you please come? They came with 47 people. <laughs> can the pastor come? The pastor of House of Praise, Norfolk. Is what? But they put no fork here. Okay, is okay. Who is that? Oh, oh, oh! You today again? Okay, okay. Let's appreciate her. Let's appreciate her. And they paid for their hotels. I'm sure you have all these books, but I'm sure you give it to somebody. This one was written by Daddy Gio, the God of Science and and Wonders. This one, wait, wait. This one is good for evangelism, written by me. But that, this, this was my first book. I think I wrote it in 1989. Why God became man. This one, the 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 healing covenant, also by me. But I've not launched any of my books like you know, mommy did. Though. Maybe one day I too will launch one of my books. Money is a defense also. Let's appreciate Pastor Yutun. The second person is also House of Praise Ampton. Is it the same church? That one, 34 workers. That's of praise, Ampton. Who, who is their pastor? You? Ah, come, come. That is incredible. Wow. Wow, wow. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Okay. The Christian man and his family seen the invisible, the hand of the Lord, the, the anointing of a thousand times more. Let's appreciate them. You know the incredible thing? The two of them came from Virginia. They drove almost four hours drive to actually get here. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. The books are there if you want to buy them. Some of you have been asking for the workers' code of conduct. Some of the pastors is also there if you want to buy them. I learned that Jesus sat down to, to you know, teach. So I will sit down to teach. Since you are all sitting, so for, for you know, symmetry, it's good for me to also teach. But we stand up to, you know, read the word of God. Can you please stand as we read the word together? Amen? Amen. Second Timothy 2, 20 to 21. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Second Timothy 2, 20 to 22, rather. Second Timothy 2, 20 to 22 from the Amplified Bible. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also utensils of wood and happenware, and some for honorable and you know, noble use, and some for mental and you know, ignob ignoble use. So whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean, who separates himself from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel set apart and used for honor, for honorable and also noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any good work. Can the saints say amen? amen? Then let's jump to Exodus 25, verse 8. 
Exodus 25, verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Then we jump to Exodus 25, 22. Exodus 25, 22. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of this testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Can the saints say amen? amen? I'm reading a lot of Bible passages tonight. Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. Ephesians 2, 19 to 22 from the KJV. Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow fellows citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the, all the building fitly framed together, great unto an holy temple in the Lord, in, in whom you also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Father, thank you for your word. Breathe upon your word and bless your people in Jesus' name. Can you please be seated? Is this place hot? It's not hot. That is strange. Because if I say a place is hot, then the place will be hot. It's not hot at all. Okay, cool then. Maybe it's the anointing that Pastor Dapan Mommy dropped upon the altar. Briefly, because our time is gone, I will maximize my time. I'll be speaking on becoming the ark of God. Slash vessels unto honor. Can we say that together? All over the years, God's desire is to dwell among his people, or rather to dwell in us. And so he initiated that Moses should build a tabernacle according to the pattern that he showed him on the mountain, where he could dwell among his people. And that tabernacle is a special object referred to as the ark of God. Can we all say the ark of God? Yeah. Which represents the presence of God. The word tabernacle, however, means a dwelling place, a tent, a place of habitation, a residence. That is the tabernacle. You, that is the real tabernacle, the one by the right. Then the other by the left, is the tabernacle with the outer court. Am I communicating at all? The one to your right is the tabernacle itself. Then the one to the left is the tabernacle with the outer court with the priest. So the word tabernacle, like I said, actually means, can we say, a dwelling place, a tent, a place of habitation, a residence. The tabernacle was a place where divinity met with humanity. Can we say that together? The tabernacle was a place where divinity met with humanity. It was a meeting place between God and man. Can we say a meeting place between God and man? So the tabernacle of this prophet called Moses was divided into three main compartments. We have the outer court. Can we say the outer court? The outer court. the outer court is where you see all those things before that you know that you know covering. Then we have the holy place, and then we have the holy of holies or the holiest. Amen. Amen. That is an outer court enclosed by curtains supported by you know pillars. It was oblong in shape, and the entrance was on the east side. And once we enter, we will see the altar of you know, sacrifice. It, that is the altar of what? Sacrifice. As you enter the altar court, the first thing you will see there is the altar of what? Sacrifice. Amen? It is a bronze altar, which was within the court, facing the entrance. The tabernacle itself, which I show you, the small place that was covered with, with a curtain, was located at the western part of the court. The tabernacle was divided by a veil, hanging curtain into two chambers. In the tabernacle, however, you have the only place. Can we say the only place? It contained the table of showbread. That is the only place. 
That's the table there by the right. It also contains the lampstand by the left, by my, by my own left. It also there contains the altar of incense, which is by the center. Only the priests were allowed to enter this section. The second chamber was called the Holy of Holies or the Holiest of All. It contained the Ark of the Covenant. The high priest entered this once a year on the Day of Atonement. And they have to tie a rope around him. And in case he made any mistake, then if he dies there, they will pull the rope. And then they will pull him out because he himself, the, because the people cannot go in. So there are seven pieces of you know, furniture in the old tabernacle, the outer court, and the tabernacle itself. In the outer court, like I said, it has what to call the brazen altar. Can we say the dino brazen altar? Or it's called the altar of sacrifice. That is the first place the worshiper who encountered as he came into the door was, the, was that altar. It was wood covered with brass or copper at that time. It was a perfect square with horns on each of the four corners. It was where the blood sacrifices or clean lambs and goats would be offered in the heat of fire unto God for atonement, that is the covering and forgiveness of their sins. Exodus 27, 1 to 8. The Kinesh Dupre, you want to read for me? Exodus 27, 1 to 8. Exodus chapter 27, verses 1 through 8. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes and his shovels, and his basins, and his flesh hooks, and his fire pans. All the vessels thereof shall that make of brass, and thou shalt make for it a grate of network of brass. And upon the net thou shalt make four brazen rings in the four corners thereof. And thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath, and the net may be even to the midst of the altar. And thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with brass. Verse 7. And the staves shall be put into the rings, and the staves shall be upon the two sides of the altar to bear it. Amen. Verse 8. Verse 8. Hollow with boards, thou shalt make it, as it was showed thee in the mount, so shall thou make it. Amen. Amen. I told you that the tabernacle was God's idea. Amen? Because he wanted a place where he could meet with man. Leviticus 17, 11, that we all know. Leviticus 17, 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So the basin altar was the first furniture. It tells us that judgment on sin and the forgiveness of sins must come first in, in one's approach to God. But thank God Christ came and died for our sins. So we don't have to do any bond sacrifice again. John 1.29 says, John 1.29 says, The next day, John said Jesus coming unto him, and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So the brazen altar was pointing to the fact that a Savior is coming that he shed his blood for us. But as of that time, they have to kill all those animals for their sins. The second furniture was the bracing lever. Can we say that together? Yeah. Or the lever of, you know, washing. The second piece of furniture was a washing basin for the priest called the lever. Lavatory place of washing. It came after the altar of sacrifice. And before the entrance to the sanctuary, it was made of polished copper. Its purpose was to wash. Can we say to wash? The priests had to daily wash their hands and feet from death and even contamination before they worship God at the altar or entered into the sanctuary to serve. The liver was not for the shedding of sacrificial blood for sin, but for the washing of death. One had to be clean to serve. Can the saints say, I have to be clean to serve? 
You can ask Dope, please. Exodus 30, 18 to 21. Exodus 30, 18 to 21. Exodus chapter 30, verses 18 to 21. Thou shalt make a lava of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or even the, or when they come near the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands and feet that they die not. And it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Amen. Amen. So the second piece of furniture was the liver. We tell us that God is not only interested in the forgiveness of our sins, but also our daily cleansing in living for him. As the Christian daily learns God's word, the Bible, he or she is cleansed from strong thinking and ways. So his or her service can be acceptable to God. Can the saints say amen? amen. Hebrews 12, 28. Hebrews 12, 28. We are for, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Can we say acceptable service? Can we say it again? So whereby we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. And Ephesians 5.26, Ephesians 5.26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Psalm 119 verse 11, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So once you get born again, and as a worker, you have to feed on the word. You have to study the word, if, but if possible, that you finish the Bible at least once a year, every year. Kenneth Egan said he read, the one, he read the New Testament 150 times. So I want to give you a challenge now. I'm not even saying finish the Bible. At least before this year runs out, finish the New Testament. Write it down in your note. Assignment. But Pastor Kingsley, you are, not, you are not writing it in your notes. The assignment is, you are to do what? Finish the New Testament before the year runs out. Amen? So, as you leave the outer court, you are going into the holy place. Let's say the holy place. The first sanctuary with three pieces of furniture. The holy place contained gold, not copper. Can we say gold? There you have the golden lampstand the golden table of bread, and the golden altar of incense. Can we say it together? The golden lampstand, the golden table of bread, and the golden altar of incense. Here the wash priest entered to perform service and also for him to represent the people in, in, the, in, the, in the worship of God. This section tells us that God is not only interested in our forgiveness or our cleansing, but also in our worship. Can we say worship? The golden lampstand was formed into the shape of an almond tree in the full bloom of life by, by beating or arming it. It had six fruitful branches with a central shaft or trunk. That is the golden lampstand. It has six fruitful branches, then it has a central trunk. Amen? They were designed to hold seven bowls filled with olive oil to provide light. Light and life match in one unit. The light was continual and must never go out. It was that light that went out when Eli lost his vision spiritually and also physically. It is a type of Christ in both light and life. John 1 4. John 1 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. Amen. So, as, as you know, Christians, our light must never go out. I pray for you, your light shall not become darkness. In that same holy place, we have the golden table of shoe bread. The golden table of shoe bread. Directly opposite the lamp stands to the table of shoe bread on the north side. Twelve loaves of bread were set on it once a week, representing the twelve tribes of what? Israel. 
during the week the bread was to be displayed before God. On the Sabbath, the priests were to eat it. That is why we take the Holy Communion. It was the same bread that David and his men ate when they were hungry. Because David was not just a king, he was also a priest. He was, he was one king that was occupying two positions. But he was also a king that was wearing the leaning effort. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians 10, 16, and 17. First Corinthians 10, 16, and 17. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the, of the body of Christ? So we be many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Amen? Amen. As we take the Holy Communion tonight, that we be strength again. Amen. We shall be energized spiritually. Amen. We shall be energized physically. Amen. The priests, they take it once a week for spiritual strength. And this was only meant for the priest. But when Christ came, he gave his life for us that any of us can take the bread, the, the you know, bread of life. It was pointing to Christ, Christ being the bread of life. John 6, 35. John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. For the rest of your life, you will never know hunger. Yeah. Still in the holy place, we have the golden altar of incense. The golden altar of incense, the third and last bit of furniture in the holy place, was the altar of incense with its four horns. You've seen the four horns. This stood by the veil, which separated the holy place from the holiest of all. The altar was for one purpose, only to burn incense, not sacrifice. To burn what? Incense. Incense pictures prayers to God. Psalm, 1, Psalm 141, verse 2. Psalm 41, verse 2. Let my prayer be set forth before thee, as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Revelation 5, 8. Revelation 5, 8. And when they are taking the book, the four beasts and four and twenty others fell down before the lamb, having every one of them abs and golden vials full of odors, which are prayer of who? Of the saints. Then Revelation 8, 3. Revelation 8, 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and that was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the true. When one prays in the name of Jesus Christ, there is power. And our prayers are answered because it's a pleasing aroma to God. I will share this testimony. It may look small to you, but to me, it, 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 it was quite big. I have been called for jury duty years back. And, uh, and they wasted my time. I was there between 9 to 5. When it was 4.30 or 5, the defending attorney told me, oh, you are a pastor. I said, yes. Oh, you will be subjective. I don't want you to be one of the juries. So I was there for almost eight hours of my time, and they wasted it. And later, they sent me a check for $15. <laughs> what an insult. So this year, they call me to come and do... First, it's last year they've been calling me. I've been giving excuses. They now wrote to me that if I don't come, they will fine me $1,000. So at our house fellowship in the house, we prayed. I was to go on Tuesday. We prayed Monday night. I said, when I get there, I want to spend five minutes. How many minutes? Five. I thought they should just interview me and ask me to go so I now, I now got there. The lady was kind to me. Favor shall go before you. <laughs> he said, we have enough jury today. So you can go. <laughs> but I will now stand with that we have actually come for jury. And you won't, they won't, they, we are not going to invite you for the next three years. <laughs> Clap for the Lord if you want to. And they said they will send me a check again. <laughs> Write it in your note. No prayer is wasted. <laughs> Every prayer you pray, answer will come. Amen. They are before God as an incense. Amen? Amen? Now that will take us to the holiest of all, where we are going. The second sanctuary with two pieces of furniture. Some will say one, but I actually call it two. The holiest place of all contained the Ark of the Covenant 
covered with a special leaf called the mercy seat. This was where God's presence resided and where he commuted our talk with Moses. Exodus 25, 22. Exodus 25, 22. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. The veil of cutting blocked the way so others could not enter. However, the minute the Lord Jesus died on the cross, the veil then in the temple was split into two, showing the way was now made for all to come into communion with God. Can the saints shout hallelujah? Matthew 27, 51. Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Then Hebrews 9, 7, and 8. Hebrews 9, 7, and 8. But unto the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The only ghost this signified that the way into the holiest of all was not yet but was not yet made manifest, while at the first tabernacle was yet standing. Then Hebrews ten nineteen to twenty one. Hebrews ten nineteen to twenty one. Having therefore bread and boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us through the way, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God. Can the saints say amen? amen? So in the earliest of all, you have the golden ark and the mercy seat. The ark was a chest made out of wood, covered with gold. It rested in the earliest place where the presence of God dwelt. The chest contained the two tablets of the Ten Commandments, God's standards of righteousness. A golden pot of, of no manner, God's provision to sustain in people in life. And Aaron's rod, which budded with life. God's choice as high priest to be our continual mediator and intercessor. Let me say this. Your pastor is chosen by God. I will say that again. With all sense of humility, your pastor is God's choice for you. So the only thing you can do is to cooperate with your pastor, be his Aaron and all, lift up his hands. A pastor you don't honor, you don't reference, his anointing cannot do anything for you. So if you are in the church, you don't reference your pastor, you don't obey him, you are making him to labor on you with pain, it's better for you to leave that church because the anointing cannot do anything for you. So in that golden heart, you have the two tablets of the Ten Commandments. You have the golden pot of manna. You have Aaron's rod. The Ten Commandments, they could not obey them. The golden pot of, of, you know, of you know, manna, when after God had fed them with manna, they said, we are tired of this food, of this loathsome food. Yoruba Bible put it better. It said, bute bute isumi. They are tired of the, what? this loathsome food. It's also represent their ingratitude to God. Aaron's rod, they are represented, they are rebellion, not accepting God's choice for them. So God had to do one thing. He, he did not want to see that they were disobedient, that they could not obey the Ten Commandments. He, could, he didn't want to see that they were ungrateful, that they didn't appreciate the angelic food. He did not want to see that they were rebellious, not accepting God's choice for them. He now covered it with the mercy seat. John 6, 51. John 6, 51. I am the living bread which came down from, the, from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Amen? Amen. Then Hebrews 4, 14. See then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. The mercy seat was the cover of the ark. It was solid gold, beaten into winged cherubim, one at each end, looking down where God's presence was. Once a year, the high priest alone went in with sacrificial blood from the brazen altar. You remember that, that you know, brazen altar? Amen? To speak with on the mercy seat, to obtain forgiveness of sins for Israel. The mercy seat tells us that there is mercy with God. 
The sacrifice of Christ is God's mercy. Amen? Amen. Romans 3.25. Romans 3.25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed to the forbearance of God. Hebrews 9.12. Hebrews 9.12. Neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood. If the Lord Jesus enter in once into the holy place heaven, having obtained eternal redemption for us, all believers. In the ark we have Aaron's rod and the tablets of, you know, of prophet Moses. The golden pot that had manna covered by the mercy seat. And the mercy seat were the, on, and beside the mercy seat were the two cherubims. But the ark signified the presence of God. All these are pointers to the Messiah Jesus, who was to come to dwell with us and in us. John 1, 14. And the world was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we bear this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen? Amen. So the essence of the ark, that a time is coming, that the Son of God will come, and will come and dwell with us, and will dwell in us. Am I communicating? So every child of God is now an ark carrier. That's why the title is Becoming the Ark of God or Vessels unto Honor. We don't have to carry any ark around again. You are now the ark of God. Can the saints say amen? amen? Because God's plan initially before Adam and Eve sinned was that God would dwell with them. God would come down to the garden to come and fellowship with them. He was talking to them face to face. So now when they sinned and God was still, let me use the word, yearning to dwell with man, to dwell in man. And he selected the people for himself called Israelites. So when they left Egypt, he now initiated the tabernacle and told Moses that there is an ark there, but because you are the one that is now, uh, let me use the word, that understand me, you will be the only one that will be holding my presence. But a time came that Jesus Christ came and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, what, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye are of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God. The Corinthians, they did not value themselves. They undervalued themselves. There were a lot of terrible things happening in the Corinthian church. Even the son was sleeping with his father's wife. And so Paul was writing to them, are you that stupid or foolish? Don't you have understanding that you are now the temple of God and you are of God and you are not your own and that you are carrying the ark of God. Amen? The same thing, believers today, they undervalue themselves. They don't know who they are. They don't understand that they are God carriers, that they have power in them. Also, God now decides to dwell in the believers and also to dwell among us. Matthew 18, 20. Am I, am I communicating? Matthew 18, 20. For we are two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Tell somebody, God is here. I was ministering years back on this same altar, and one of my ministers, God, opened his eyes, and he saw Jesus, Jesus standing right next to me. Brethren, don't undervalue yourself. You are a God carrier. Yeah. First Corinthians 3, 16. First Corinthians 3, 16. Paul was still writing to the Corinthians, to the Corinthians rather. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. In Ephesians 2.22, Ephesians 2.22, in whom you also are builded together. Can we say the next phrase together? For an habitation of God through the Spirit. Tell somebody, God inhabits you. Hence, we don't need to be carrying the ark around again. We are now the ark of God. But God will not dwell in the filthy or sinful vessel. 2 Timothy 2.19-21, this time I will read from the from the KJV, 2 Timothy 2, 19 to 21. 
Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this zeal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart, depart, depart from iniquity. Can the saints say depart? Depart. Depart is an active verb. You can't transfer your own responsibility to God. It is you that have to depart from iniquity. Amen? Amen. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. That is where the challenge is. In the house of God, there are two kinds of vessels. Vessels to honor and vessels to dishonor. Do not be vessels of dishonor. Amen. And we all know the parable of the, t- of the tears. He said, they sowed a seed, they went to sow tears among them. He said, let them grow together. Because in the process of uprooting the tears, you may uproot the, the seed. He said, at the time of harvest, the tears will be gathered into hell, and the seed will make heaven. So the challenging and the painful thing is that you can be a worker for 30 years and be a vessel unto the sun. That you are a witch and you are the one firing arrows at your pastor when he's preaching and you'll be there. You'll be in church for 30 years and you are a vessel unto this honor. I was preaching in this church years back. I was a younger pastor, maybe 20, 25 years ago. But it was a Friday night. The church was as, was, as, was, as, was as full as this. It was during power exposure. And the witch was sitting far, far there. I was preaching and she had the audacity to be throwing arrows at me. I don't mind witches being in church if they sit down quietly. <laughs> but how can I be preaching and you are throwing arrows at me? I said, I'm preaching and there's, <laughs> there's a witch here. Who is throwing arrows at me? I, I was a younger pastor. I said, you are going to die. I won't say that again now. And I, and I just continued preaching. It was a Friday night. So on Tuesday, she came to my office shaking. He said, it's not good, Pastor. It's not good to throw stones in the market. He said, when you throw stones to the market, it will be somebody from your family. And to make it worse, the woman came from my town. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mama, I didn't throw any stone in the market. He said, you threw one last Friday. I said, when? He said, you were preaching, you said, there is a witch here that, oh, that was throwing her rosa. You said, I'm that witch. I said, Mama, why didn't you sit down jejele? Check that from the Oxford Dictionary. Why do you sit down quietly? Why were you throwing her rosa at me? And I wanted to reverse it, but I was not allowed to. So I asked my subordinate, one of my staff, to go, and, to go and pray for her. And in spiritual authority, if I say something, Pastor Dako cannot cancel it. If you say something, I cannot cancel it. So the woman died. So we resolve to be a vessel unto what? But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge, can we say purge? Purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. And prepared unto every good work. You want to be the ark of God, you must depart from iniquity. Can the saints say, depart from iniquity? Resolve to be a vessel unto honor and also purge yourself. That's one thing I don't like doing. That day, I could not copy something. Once you are 50, 60, they say you should do it every seven, seven years. And you have to drink this liquid overnight. You have to sit by the restroom. Because if you are not careful, before you move from the bedroom to the restroom, you may even mess up. So purging is not an easy process. You have to examine yourself. Do I want to be a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor? How do I want to end my journey to eternal prominence? And then you resolve to purge yourself of every works of the flesh so that you can be an hack of God. Can the saints say amen? amen? So we are to become the hack of God and vessels of honor to his glory. The plan of God for the New Testament believer is for God to dwell in us and walk through us. But we need to consecrate ourselves to him and make sure we deal with all the works of the flesh. Can the saints say amen? amen. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. The first one there is adult fornication, uncleanliness. Can you imagine somebody, an actually well read in this America, he was, he was facing the camera, but he forgot that the camera was there and he was masturbating. You know who I'm, who I'm talking about? Uncleanliness. Lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. You know there is hatred in church, but today we are going to repent. Amen. Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies. There is envy, there are envies in church. Mothers, some people in their heart, they are entertaining mother. That may surprise you. Drunkenness. Some Christians are still getting drunk, like Noah who got drunk and arm saw him, instead of holding to his responsibility, caused harm. Revelings and such like, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I've also told in time, past, that they will do something, shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. These days, I told people that I hate this dating system, and I will tell you why. You are saying you are dating my daughter. I'm talking to you here as my as my own daughter, those of you who are single. And you said you are just dating her, she's not even your fiancé yet. And then for one, two, three years, all your friends know that you are dating her. And she's been coming to your house and you have been messing up with her. After three years, you say you are no longer interested. That is the height of wickedness. The height of what? And the girl cannot get anybody to marry again within the community because everybody knew the story. You go and tell the story to your friend. What they taught us years back is that you should pray. Then you receive from God who you want to get married to. Then you go and tell him or her. And that was what I did to mommy. Amen? <laughs> Those of you went to Ife, there's a place called Orchard at Ife. Yes. <laughs> so I went there to fast and pray for, 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 you know, three days. And because I'm a very handsome man, I had for them at my fingertips. But now God said, at that time, we called her Sister Margaret. And we dated for 18, or we had courtship, rather, for 18 months. You, you, you want to laugh? We never... I had an intimacy. So when we got married, the first intimacy I said, let us pray. <laughs> <laughs> My own is even better. You want to hear another story? <laughs> you want to hear another story? <laughs> you all know Reverend Anansiola. <laughs> he got married. He and his wife, they were virgins. So the first day, they will eat, do fellowship, and sleep. <laughs> They did not know what to do. <laughs> Second day, third day. So the third day, they called a friend who had been married. What, what now should we do? <laughs> you may laugh, but that was the teaching of, in those days. That was what? The teaching in those days. We fear God. We reference God. We know that it's either holiness or hell. It was the third day that the friend told him what to do. <laughs> now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery. If I'm courtship, I'm appealing to you. If I've messed up, stop it. It will not make God to bless your marriage. And if you are dating our sister, you don't have the intention of marrying her. Please leave the little girl alone. Don't say you are dating her, she's coming to your house to come and cook. She's sleeping in your house, you have messed up with her. Everybody knew she's your girlfriend, you say she's not your fiancé until you propose to her. After three years, you say they're no longer interested. God will judge you. God will judge you. Because you two are going to have children, unless you repent, they will do the same to your children. And the harvest is always greater than the seed. 
Can I teach like a father? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. For a witch, please repent so that you don't die like that woman. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, that as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things, they which do such things, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. If you're not going to live holy, then get out of the church and enjoy yourself. Because you're just wasting your time. You're not going to make heaven. If you're not going to live holy, go there, drink, smoke, do anything you want to do. Have ten girlfriends if you want to. But you are living in church, you are coming to church, you are not living holy, you are wasting your time. The ark must be holy. Can we say the ark must be holy? holy. Also, the ark must live a life of worship. The vessel of honor must live a life of worship. However, the purpose of the divine indwelling is for our lives to glorify God. Amen? Amen. And to be worshippers of God. The Bible makes it clear that God created man and that he created him for his glory. Amen? Isaiah 43, 7. Isaiah 43, 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, you are called by God's name. Amen? Amen. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea. I have made him. Tell somebody, your life must give glory to God. So the ultimate purpose of man, according to the Bible, is simply to glorify God. So God created man in his image so that we can give glory to him. Man's purpose cannot be fulfilled without God. So for God to dwell in us, there must be absolute consecration. Let's say absolute consecration. Which is holiness. Hebrews 12, 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man, no pastor, no assistant pastor, no deacon, no deaconess, no head of choir, no Sunday school teacher, no children teacher shall see the Lord. What makes you to see the Lord is not your position, but holiness and peace with all men. Can the saints say amen? First Peter 1, 15 to 17. First Peter 1, 15 to 17. But as he which are called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Can we say be ye holy in all manner of conversation? I pray that God will sanctify your tongue tonight. More than 50% of our sins is through our conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judge it according to every man's work, part the time of your sojourning here, in what? In fear. Talking about holiness, that should be purity of heart. Let's say purity of heart. Psalm 24, 3 to 6. We want to be a vessel of honor. We want to be an act of God. That will be purity of heart. Psalm 24, 3 to 6. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the from the God of our salvation, the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, sailor. Amen? Amen. She's talking about purity of heart. Ephesians 4, 30 to 32. Ephesians 4, 30 to 32. And give not the Holy Spirit of God, we are by here. Seed unto the day of redemption. Let some bitterness. Can we shout all? Oh. All bitterness, all wrath, all anger, all clamor, all evil speaking. Some of you, you speak evil of your pastor. Let that stop today. All evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. With all what? Malice. You know that this malice in church. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. You can't be workers in the church for 10 years and you will not offend yourself, but the rule says we should forgive one another. There should be no bitterness. That man who jitted you 10 years ago, forgive him. There should not be wrath, there should not be anger, there should not be clamor, there should not be evil speaking. 
they should be put away from you with all malice. You are to be kind one to another as the ark of God, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. You must deal with the enemy within. Can we say amen? amen. What kills many people is the enemy within. Mark 7, 21 to 23. Am I too fast? Okay. Mark 7, 21 to 23. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications. Adulted, we are going to pray again, that's that no spirit tonight. Mothers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, which is lack of, you know, lack of, you know, restraint, and evil high, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come within and defile the man. Many people have been destroyed because of the enemy within. There are evil thoughts, adulteries in our heart, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, evil high, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. And I wonder what people are proud about in America. You don't know and you don't own anything. Your house is 30 or 15 years mortgage. Your Mercedes Benz is on car note. And your Range Rover is on car note. If you don't pay within two or three months, they are going to come and take it from you. It's all Lagos for sure. <laughs> so, what are you being proud of? When you don't own anything, God will deliver us from pride. Amen. If you want to, if you are allowed to, to you know, list how dirty or how bad things are, you start with unbelief. God, the children of Israel did not enter the promised land because of unbelief. The next will be adultery. The third will be pride. Pride made Lucifer to fall to become Satan. You shall not fall. In consecration for us to become the ark of God, there must be a total surrender. Let's say total surrender. Total surrender. Matthew nineteen twenty seven. Matthew nineteen twenty seven. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? Peter has the audacity to tell the master. You know we are forsaken all. How many of us, if ten percent of us here? can tell the master that we are forsaken or then we have scored A. Peter said, Master, you know we are forsaken all. God wants us to forsake all and be his, his what? Disciples. And the definition of being a disciple is in Luke 4, 1433. The definition is in Luke 1433. So likewise, whosoever be of you that forsaken not all he had, he cannot be my so, in this place now, we have less than 10% disciples. I will use an example of forsaking all, Daddy Gio. The founder of this church, late back in Diane, he came to church one day, and he said, hey, you guys, God actually needs some money. So I want all of you to go and empty your account and bring the money coming Sunday. And everybody said, yes, sir. So the following Sunday, Papa Kedawemi said, what I ask you to do through the Holy Spirit, how many of you have closed your account? Only Daddy and Mommy Jew stood up. The rest, clap for the Lord if you want to. The rest were not disciples. They have not prepared yet to forsake what? Or Years back, Daddy Jew said, God told him he was looking for who is fit for the top, who will be Jew. And who will be Jew must be somebody who has what? Forsaken God. I will say this. There are some things God cannot commit into your hand if I'm not forsaken her. I will say that again. There are levels you cannot reach if I'm not forsaken her. It's not going to happen. God will not commit some treasures into your hand if you are not a disciple. Can we say a disciple, a disciple. is someone who has forsaken all? According to Jesus' definition of disciple. 
So God wants us to forsake all, such as Peter, James, and John, like the disciples of old. The challenge we have with workers because they are not forsaken all. They think they are serving the pastor. Come to workers meeting, it's 9 a.m. People like us who pray all night on, on you know, Saturday, I, I rarely come to workers meeting. So when I don't come, you don't, you don't see them because they are not forsaken all. Pay your tithe. There are workers who are not paying their tithe because they are not forsaken all. Who we'll come for, choose a day for you to come and pray. After you have said it ten times, you just you just leave some and you forsake and you've just you don't leave you only focus on those who are listening to you. There are pastors in my church who have no day to come and pray, and I've been saying it for a whole year. There are assistant pastors in Bowie who have no day to come and pray, and I've been saying it for almost a year. There are deacons and deaconesses who have no day to come and pray, and I've been saying it for two, three years. So I just left them. And it is worse when I leave you. And I, focus on, and I focus on those who are obeying me. When I ask you to do something, you don't do it two or three years, and I just leave you. I don't want to waste my time on you. Let me focus on those who are listening to me. Jesus will not pack you up. Yeah. Or you may say your pastor is not Jesus. We are representing him. Right. If your pastor decides not to correct you again, you are in soup. You do anything, your pastor just closes his eyes. Let her do what she wants to do. Let him do what she wants to do. You will not come to that level. Yeah. That your pastor will give instructions for three years, teaching you, distinguished by their, by their prayers. Revival come by prayers. Repeating it as if he has no sermon. And still you refuse to do it. So he just he left you alone. Be doing what you are doing. And we focus on those who are listening to him. Ah, if you are, if you are listening to me, you are, in, you are in one of those places. Repent tonight. Your pastor represents Jesus. If you do not believe it, he's the under shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd. If your pastor is forsaking you for over a year or two, check your life. God wants us to forsake all. Can we say that? Such as Peter, James, and John like the disciples of old. The church lacks power because we are not consecrated enough. A lot of flesh and the lack of total and complete surrender. Let me say that again. A lot of flesh and the lack of total and complete surrender. In consecration also, there should be an, there should be an undivided act. Matthew 22, 32 to 40. Matthew 22, 32 to 40. And the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the, and when the multitude heard this, they were, astonished, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Can the saints say the great commandment? The great commandment. Or the greatest commandment, the greatest commandment. In, the in the Bible? Is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like, like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and thyself. On these two commandments hang on the law and the prophets. So which means many workers are living in disobedience. Because we have broken the first commandment. The first and great commandment. Which is to love the Lord with all your heart. With all your soul. And with all your mind. Your song should be, darling Jesus, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus, you are a wonderful man. I love you so much, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus. God is looking for lovers. Those who will love him with all their heart, with all their soul. 
and with all their mind. If you want to be consecrated to him, you should love him with all your heart, with all your soul. What does it mean to worship? Let's say to worship. When you want to worship, you live for him totally. Can we say that together? When I become a worshiper, the challenge is, we may do workers without making you worshipers. You should have made you worshipers first before you make you workers. Second Corinthians 5.15. Second Corinthians 5.15. And they died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And they died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. One of my pastors came to my house. They are about to reconstruct their, you know, building. And I didn't have much, so the church gave him $1,000. So he came to me, he sold two of his cars. He raised money from his business, $200,000. He sold two of his exotic cars. Raised money from his, from his business, $200,000, to reconstruct the church building. That is somebody who knows that. Henceforth is to live for him because he died for him. Ask someone, who are you living for? Yeah. What that man did, he may not know the implications now. He will reap it. His children shall reap it. His grandchildren shall also reap it. His great grandchildren shall also reap it up to the fourth generation. God will not owe you anything. Romans 14, 7 to 9. Romans 14, 7 to 9. For none of us live to himself, and no man dies to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that may be Lord both of the dead and the living. So Christ died for those who will live for him, not those who will serve him half heartedly, not those that will be begging to come for night vigil, not those that will be begging to come for workers' meeting, not those that will be begging to pay their tithes. For none of us live to himself once you are born again. You are no longer yourself. You have been bought with a price. And no man died to himself. So whether we live as workers, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. And you are laying your treasure in heaven, not for the pastor. I've told my workers, some workers may receive more reward than me if they do their work faithfully as unto the Lord. So the challenge you have that you don't understand the kingdom. When you understand, nobody will beg you. You will, you will do your schedule to live for the Lord. You will arrange your finances to live for the Lord. You will arrange your time to live for the Lord. Your treasure will be for the Lord. Your time will be for the Lord. Your talents will be for the Lord. Your family shall be for the Lord. Because you are laying treasures in heaven for yourself. Not for the pastor. Some of you may receive more reward than the regional pastor. If you are faithful to your calling. And you do it as unto the Lord. You are a children teacher. You fast. You pray before you come and teach the children. We had this man when we were at, at the you know, headquarters. He was a Sunday school teacher. The Sunday school superintendent want to divide the classes. He want to, them to be actually equal. Maybe 50-50. But every Sunday, everybody will migrate to that young man's teacher. My nephew, they love him. They call him demonstrator. He has one small Bible like this. So we went to everybody, the Sunday school, we said, oh, no, we want to write about two years. When the Sunday school said, God fed up. Okay, you go to him. We want to go to him. We went to ask, what was he doing that others were not doing? 
this gentleman will pray all night for about seven hours to come and teach Sunday school. The others will sleep all night come and teach Sunday school. <laughs> One day in our church at Ibano, one young man led praise and worship for just 30 minutes. The glory of God came down to the church and the pastor could not minister. You are coming to teach the children. You are coming to teach Sunday school. You are coming to sing in the choir. And you fornicated before you came. You are a vessel unto dishonor. You are not an ark of God. The challenge is that we don't desire God the way we should. We live for the wrong things. We live for profane, modern, and ephemeral things. We should get our preferences right tonight and begin to love God. Just as Paul said in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is King. May we have understanding that as the ark of God, we are to live for him. In consecration, for you to be the ark of God, that should be total and complete obedience. Can the saints say amen? First Samuel 15, 23 and 24. First Samuel 15, 23 and 24. For rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft. So rebellion is equivalent to what? If you are living in rebellion, you are a witch. You don't have to fly. The Bible says you are what? You are a witch. And stubbornness is an is as iniquity and idolatry. If you are stubborn, you are an idol worshiper. That you don't come to, when you come to church, you come with a teachable spirit. We teach you, we give you instructions, you say yes, and then you run with it. You don't argue with us. You don't rebel against the word of God. You don't say, I will do it my own way. You must do it according to the constitution. Can the saints say amen? Because and the and the challenge there is he said, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I've sinned for I've targeted the commandment of the Lord and thy word, because I fear the people and obey their voice. Fear God, don't fear the people. I pity Samson. Samson slept on the lap of Delilah. And eventually they shaved him. And he rose up and wanted to go and fight and said he did not know that God has left him. Ah, God shall not leave you. Amen. He rose up, he wanted to go and fight, but said he did not know. So you may be a fan that has been switched up and you are still rolling. And you don't know that God has left you. Ah, today there will be restoration. Amen. And he did not know that God had left him. We want to be a vessel of honor and ark of God. That should be total obedience. We want to be the ark of God. God is too holy to dwell in unholy vessels. Can the saints say amen? amen. John 14, 21 to 24. John 14, 21 to 24. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, it is, he it is that loveth me. And they that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And may you be loved of God afresh. Amen. I say, may God love you afresh today. After, after genuine repentance. And I will love him. I love that. And I will love him. And will manifest myself to him. Judas said not him, not Judas the, you know, Scariot. Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thy servant to us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if a man love me, he will keep my word. There are two tests for God's love. Let's say two tests. The first one is obedience. The second one is giving. If you are dating a man, he didn't spoil you. It's not buying gifts for you. You went to eat in ordinary Texas roadhouse. He asked you to pay. <laughs> Jettition him. He won't be a good husband. When you love, you give. When you love, you do what? Mark, May 11 was our 39th wedding anniversary. You want to hear clap for the Lord? You want to hear some little gist? 
And then the following day, May 12 was Mother's Day. I decided to buy four cards. Two for Mother's Day, two for anniversary. So I put one under her pillow. I put one in the restroom. I put one in the bathroom. I put one in our, in our prayer room. Which, which checks inside though, not just empty cards. And since that day, my food went to... And she said, this is very creative. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. Can we say love gives? Jesus answered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we come unto him and make our abode with him. He said, let's say we will come unto him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They come and live with you. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sins. So don't tell me you love God when you are living in disobedience. And the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Obedience, holiness, purity, and total surrender are keys to a life of carriers of God's ark and the life that will be a vessel unto honor. In consecration, there should be love. Let's say love. John 13, 34, and 35. John 14, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Love is the epitome of all virtues. God himself is love. And as children of God, we are to walk in love. The trademark of every Christian should be love. There is no substitute for love. What our world needs is what each of us needs. It is love. Amen? Amen. <sighs> I will just end the sun because of time. An act of love goes on or a long way and it endures forever. One of the reasons why we should love is because God is love. Let's say God is love. He who does not love has not become acquainted with God, does not and never did know him, for God is love. First John 4, 8. First John 4, 8. He who does not love has not become acquainted with God, does not and never did know him, for God is love. And God's love is unconditional. Don't say the sister or the brother is not lovable. The Bible says, while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, brethren, we must serve God with all our being. Amen? Amen. We must serve God with what? Amen. We must serve God with reference and godly fear. Because our God is a consuming fire. Amen. I love the way the Yoruba put it. In a junior Serve God with what? Reference and what? Godly fear. Serve God with all our being. Serve God through prayer. Serve God through giving. Make sure you repent and be paying your tithes. Can the saints say amen? amen? Serve God through faith. Serve God through our passion or calling. Anything you are called to, do it as unto the Lord. Serve him through soul winning. Amen? amen. God expects us to serve him with all our being. As vessels, we are vessels of God's grace, love and truth, chosen and set apart for his divine purposes. And so, we should make sure that that divine purpose that we are actually created for before the foundation of the world, that we fulfill it. As we fulfill it, God will rain blessings upon us 
we become a wonder to the world. We become a sort of astonishment to the world. People will see us and they will say truly, you are serving the living God. I'm done. I have a life to live. I have a life to live. I have a life to live. My life shall not waste. I have a life to live. My life shall not waste. I have a life to live. I have a God to serve. 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 My life shall not waste. I have a God to serve. My life shall not waste. I have a God. I have a God to serve. 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 This life must not waste. I have a God to serve. This life must not waste. I have a God to serve. I have a life to live. I have a life to live. I have a life to live. I have a life. This life must not waste. I have a life to live. This life must not waste. I have a life to live. I have a God to serve. 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 This life must not waste. I have a God to serve. This life must not waste. I have a God to serve. This life must not waste. I have a God to serve. This life must not waste. I have a God to serve. As we are thanking God for the word He has sent to us, I call on Pastor Adi Kombi to come and lead us in prayer for about 10 minutes. Let's begin to thank God. God has sent His word to us. The Bible says He sent His word and He healed them and delivered them from their, from their destruction. Let's begin to thank God that the word of God will prosper us. The word of God will find a place in our heart. Sheke sheke ra bobo. Gude amike sheke ra bobo. Sheke sheke rika bobo sukura baba. Meke sheke ra de de sheke ria gaga. O soke ke sheke rika baba. Ente rike sheke ra baba. Let's pray that the God will bear fruit in our hearts. Meke sheke ra bobo sukura baba. Sheke sheke ra baba. Sheke ra dada.